You guys know uh, God has a lot of names. I'm not sure how many uh, they are, but uh, God has a lot of names. Uh, starting with El Shaddai. You probably know this name, right? El Shaddai, El Shaddai. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a great song. Uh, I don't know the rest, <laughs> but it's like all the names of, of God, and it's, it's really great. It's just like melting my heart so whenever I sing this. Um, and, you know, all the names, they have uh, meanings and implications. Um, El Shaddai, you guys know the name, uh, the meaning of it? It's Almighty God, a God who is Almighty. Um, El Elyon, anybody know? <laughs> okay, the God who's most high, El Olam, God who is everlasting, everlasting God, El Roy, God who watches us, uh, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, my provider. You guys know that song, right? The providing God, uh, Jehovah Nissi, God who gives us victory. Jehovah's Shalom. Everybody knows Shalom. That's what they say. You know, Hello, Shalom. That's the God of peace. God who give us peace. Jehovah Roy. It's my shepherd. God who is my shepherd. And we want to focus on the very last one. Jehovah Rapha. And that is God of... Anybody know? Jehovah Rapha. Somebody said it? Yeah, it's related with our today's topic. Healing. Yeah, God who heals. Yeah, God heals. And that's one of his names. God heals. God has power to heal us. Amen. 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 Yeah, God desires healing. And he wants to heal us more than anybody. God wants us to be healed. And his passion is there. In the Bible, we can see many, many stories that God show God's healing power, Jehovah Rapha. And one third of ministry, even in the New Testament, one third of ministry of Jesus was healing ministry. But actually, to be technically correct, it's more like curing ministry. For healing ministry, actually, the whole ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ is about healing ministry. Everything is about healing, and He wants to heal us. You know, healing is much, much bigger than a curing, a physical cure. It's a restoration of the wholeness of our, our, of our being. The cure is a small part of healing in a way. Cure is a restoration of our physical uh, well-being, physical body. Sometimes people can be healed without cure. Have you ever seen anybody like that? They're healed, but they're not cured. Great example I have, uh, Nick Fuibich. Is that how, how you say it? I, I'm not really sure how, how it says it. You probably know him, right? Fuibich? Fuibich. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Nick, uh, Australian guy. Uh, I was born without limbs, and he's not cured yet. He doesn't have limbs. But he still, I mean, he still lives without limbs. It's, you know, with the stability. However, he is enjoying his life. Uh, he goes all around the world. And he's just like, he's like motivating, motivating people, inspiring people. He's sharing God's love and his plan in his life. And he's challenging people around, all around the world. I believe God's in control. And when life doesn't make sense, we know that God still has a plan, hope, and a future for each and every one of us. When God doesn't change a circumstance, we know that He can use it for good, that others may see the power of Christ in us. I've realized that God is more interested in changing my heart than my circumstance. And this is the purpose that we are called to live for. 
to be a living testimony to those around us that they can see the victory that we can live in by the power of His Holy Spirit. And maybe these challenges that are present in my life are not just for me to be more dependent on God, but to be an example and a visual aid of God's strength and victory through my weakness. When I was younger, I used to be adamant about being independent in my daily living. But now, I see that it's so much easier having a caregiver. And that gives me more time and energy to do the things that God's called me to do. When attempting to achieve your dreams, it seldom happens the first time. But those who succeed are the ones who never give up. What do you do when you fail? You try again. What happens when you fall down? You get back up. You do not know what you can achieve until you try it. In the beginning, there were many things I could not do. But because I chose to never give up, I now am living a life without limits. He's such a hero. It's, it's so inspiring to see him. And uh, his strength and his wisdom, his inspiration is, is based on the Bible, you know, based on uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and that really inspiring and challenging me the most. See, he's not cured yet. He's a believer, he's, he's a messenger of Christ, but still without limbs. He lives like that with disabilities. But he's still, even though he's you know full of disability, but he lives a life full of positivity and confidence. And we can say he is not cured yet, but he is healed. But sometimes uh, people can be cured but still not healed. People are being cured from the physical illness. They're healthy and they're okay, their well-being is great, but they are still, they still do not find peace with God and they don't have peace with other people. They waste their lives pursuing these meaningless things in this life. Fames, riches, titles, money, whatever, they are not happy with their life. And they have this the mentality of victim, victim mentality always complaining, always blaming and pointing fingers at other people, always being negative. And in those cases, they have not experienced healing yet. Last Wednesday, I had a phone call from this guy. Um, and he wanted to meet with me because he wanted to find more about our church. And he didn't sound like Korean, it didn't sound like, I don't know, he, he was like, yeah, Canadian, uh, no accent, just like fluent English, so like, yeah, so, so let's meet together, and he sounded a little, a little old too, so I was like, wow, so how did you find it, our, our church, and he said, yeah, 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 I got it, you know, like some, some of a friend, friend of mine, uh, my, my children told me uh, about this church, so like, wow, this is great. So let's meet. So the next day we met together on Plains Road, McDonald on Plains Road, Burlington. Uh, he didn't have a car, so I drove there, met him, I sit down, had a chat, drinking coffee. And um, so he wanted to know more about church. So I took him to our church. I drove here together, and uh, we just had a little tour around our church. You know, I went to the base, uh, the lower level. I went to a chapel. This is room, this is gymnasium, and talked about our church. And at that time, every Thursday uh, afternoon, like morning to like three o'clock in the afternoon, we have uh, uh, this uh, senior college, they call it. Uh, they're serving seniors. They're having uh, music lessons, they have instrument uh, lessons, they have uh, like a lot of things going on. Um, so I just like introduce people. Hey, this is uh, basically, uh, 
yeah, he's named Kevin. Yeah, Kevin. Yeah, this is him. This is, you know, Mr. Who, Mrs. Mrs. Who. Like I try to introduce him. Um, and uh, the senior college, they had they offer this great Korean food, like like buffet style. Like it's like really really nice. Uh, Julie's mom, she's the head of uh, the senior college, so she's taking care of food very very well. Like, you guys know how how good she is, right? So. Awesome food. So I, I took him to Kevin. I came in, like, would you like to have some Korean food? So like we sat down, we ate together, and all. Even though it was a spicy, it was like, you know, he was taking very well. Like, oh, yes, this is really great. And we talked a lot, and, and I introduced Matt, uh, Pastor Matthew, Pastor James, you know, Pastor Ko, and then we talking each other. You know what we were thinking of? Uh, they were thinking of having an English class. Like English mission, mission English, or something like that for KM, the Korean speaking ministry, because we go to Cuba, we go to Dominica, and they want to learn English. They want to develop their English uh, skill. So, uh, yeah, let's have a class. And we actually thought of, you know, hey, Kevin, I think it would be really great if you can come and, and then teach us English. So I kept, wow, this is great. Yeah, he teach me Korean and we te I teach you English. And he's, he's fluent in French as well. So he's like, wow, this is awesome. By the way, he's like around 50, mid 50. He's really old, like, he's quite old. <laughs> quite old, tall, uh, handsome, really nice guy. You know, he, he knows so much about history and he so, knows so much about economy. And, you know, he, he seems to be very knowledgeable, right? So this is really great. Um, so after lunch, he said, oh yeah, you know, I need to go back. So I, I gave him a ride back. Uh, on the way going back, and we were talking, right? we were talking, and I said, like, you know, Andrew, Pastor Andrew, um, and after all that talk, he said, before he's dropped off, he said, I need money. I need, I need money. I need about $150. I was like, okay. <laughs> well, tell you the truth, he was homeless. And a very smart one. Never seen any homeless approaching people like that. Right? So I was really surprised. And then, hey, um, you know, at the time I was driving, and hey, I, I don't have cash with me, but we do have an emergency fund. Just in case anything happened like that, we do have that emergency fund, but we go through procedure. We have process. So I still need to speak uh, my, uh, my committee, and we, it, takes, it takes time to get it. But he was demanding. He was like, Andrew, I need it right now. So I said, I don't have cash with me. Man, like, yeah, I can't really help you right now. But he said, he was demanding me, like, hey, you can just take the card out and go to ATM machine, their bank, Scotia Bank right there, TD Bank right there, you can go and take the money. It was like to the point where I, I felt a little threatened. And I was like, so we stopped by at this Tim Horton, and I got out, and um, he was about to meet somebody else. So. You know, I, I talked to him, and let me, let me just talk to uh, my committee, my other pastors, and let me get back to you. While you're meeting here, I'll get back to you. And I was like thinking, I'm praying, like, well, what should I do? What am I supposed to do? What is the right answer for this guy? So I was thinking, 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 praying, just walking around for about 30, 40 minutes. And then, yeah, he must be really desperate, right? Just asking questions, I mean, Money like that. So you know what? Instead of giving him money, like I don't, we have procedure and I don't have a lot of money to give out. And it's not really good to give out money like that, right? We can't just give him money uh, today, but how can we, you know, like we can't supply that demand you know, throughout his life. So I don't think it's the right thing to do. So uh, I bought a $20 gift card from Tim Horton. So I was about to give it to him. I didn't give it to him yet. I was like ready and I was like, sit down and he finished with the, uh, the business with the other guy. And he was trying to get a job from this guy. But the meeting was over and I was waiting and met with uh, Kevin and I sat down and I was talking. Like, so yeah, uh, Kevin, I 
you know, you, you look very, you know, knowledgeable and you are you, you look very smart, uh, very wise. But you know, a lot younger than you are, I, I you know, I just you know, I had a tough life as well, you know, like I was talking about my son, you know, like you know, talking about all that, you know, the hardship that I had. But you know, I really want to bless you. I really want to bless you. But you know what? He, his attitude was like, you know, instead of spending time like here, you should go back to your church and talk to your pastors. You're wasting your time. All right. Okay. All right, I bless you. Yeah. All right, let me talk to them. I'll, I'll get back to you. That's how everything ended. You know, I didn't. I was not upset. Like, just thinking of him, I, I was not upset at all. Uh, he just lied. His original intention to coming to our church and meeting with me was getting him money. And, oh, I, I just felt very bad um, for him. I was desperate. And I had this sort of compassion, pity. So I, I, I was willing to help him out, but it's, he, the, the attitude was not right. So I, was, I just needed more time to think of, time to pray more. I'm still waiting for his uh, call. And he's supposed to come today, but he's not. <laughs> Kevin? <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, he was a gentleman. Um, he knows so much about economy, history, and he knows about life. He seems to be very wise and very eloquent. He uh, speaks French and English, and there's a lot that he could offer. And physically, He's healthy, he's like old, but he's you know pretty tall, healthy. You know. He has all the limbs, you know, healthy, but he you know he, he is pretty you know he he doesn't need cure so much, but he needed healing. He needed healing. We have so many people, right? We have so many people in our life. Who are so okay, like everything is perfect, you know, they're healthy and they're financially, they're, they're great, they're doing very well, their, their career, and uh, they have so much knowledge and wisdom, you know? but sometimes they don't need cure, but they need healing. The restor restoration of, of hearts and spirit, the restoration and renewal of hearts and spirit is desperately needed. You know, Jesus wants to heal us. God wants to wants to heal us. Our whole being needs to be restored, renewed. It's a holistic. The whole body, spirit, and our life needs to be redeemed. Not just part of our body. Not just a part of our health. So Jesus cures so many people, you know, crippled, blind, deaf, demon possessed, and even the dead. The story of Lazarus. He raised Lazarus from the dead. Now let me ask this question. Is Lazarus still alive physically? He was resurrected. No, he died. Bible doesn't say that, but we know is that. Then what was the point of raising this dead guy from the dead? Jesus raised him up to show that life was in God's power. Lazarus, even though he's dead, is alive spiritually. Yes. Absolutely. And this is the point that Jesus tried to make. Jesus wants us to have eternal life in God. And not just extended life physically. You know, we all gonna die. And we all know that. Somehow, some point in our life, we all gonna be expired. And most of us will be unhealthy status, unhealthy condition. That's most of us die. What God wants us to enjoy is not just a cure from this physical illness, 
but the complete healing, the everlasting life. And all the signs and wonders that the apostles performed in the early church were to give us the treasure of heart. The signs and wonders are like, a, like an entrance. It's a very scary and yet very mysterious story, but that's, that was going on. That was the context at that time. The people were living in fear. The funny thing is, even though that incident happened, the people were added. Why? Because they long for this treasure of a heart. They realize this is real. This is a genuine thing. The crowds, the multitude gathered also from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by impure spirits. And all of them were healed. All of them were healed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All of them were healed. And some of them were healed physically, cured physically. Some of them gained peace that surpassed beyond all human understanding, even though they were not physically cured. But all experienced God's love. They all experienced God's grace and found the meaning and purpose of their life. Even the purpose of their weakness, the purpose of their vulnerability, and this is, this is this is really awesome part of the gospel. Right? We're living in this broken world. We're living in this, you know, we see encountering this, the thing, the terrible, miserable things in our life, and you probably experienced that. But just like Paul said, the Apostle Paul said, they received God's final answer and accepted with that with gratitude. Let's look at this. What he said was, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness. Weaknesses is so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses and insults and hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I'm weak, then I am strong. And this is just like beautiful, paradoxical, the side of the gospel. Isn't it amazing? You are weak and you are strong. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my witnesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. The healing comes from God. You know, you may not have cure, even though you ask so much. Paul asked it three times. Apostle Paul. The disciple, the most influential, uh, the, the, the Christian history, history of Christianity, most influential, the significant, uh, the man of God, asking three times, God said, my grace is sufficient for you. You may not have cure in you, even though you ask. Every day, I ask, you know, God, please heal my son. Please. I pray that prayer every single day. But nothing really, yeah, it doesn't really work that way. But I understand that's part of God's plan. It is painful, it's, it's hard to swallow, but that is the gospel. And that is the plan of God. And just thinking that it is part of God and thinking that God is perfect and God is good God, even though I don't see the cure in Him, I can still say, God, you are perfect and you are good and you are still faithful. You are still awesome, God. You don't cure Him for a special purpose. 
That's how I see it. That's how Bible presenting. If you're having that hard time, the trouble in your life, the problems in your life, and that is a biblical way to interpret that context. You may not have a cure, but you can be healed. Your heart and your spirit can be renewed and restored. That's what God desires to have. Don't just look at the one dimension. God is perfect and good, and He has a plan in every single one of you.